Some metrics make it possible to predict running back performance better than any other position. We'll go over those coming up next. Hello, everyone. I'm Eric Lay. And I'm Gary Kurtzman, and we are the Fantasy Football Consultants. We're recording a series of shows to allow the viewer to discern which are the key metrics when trying to pick player performance for DFS lineups for quarterbacks, running backs, wide receivers, and tight ends. Now, links to all of these shows are available in the show descriptions, and they can all be viewed on our YouTube channel. But Eric, this show is about running backs, and what do you say we just hop right to it? Let's run our way to running backs. Hello. And when we do our NFL DFS weekly show, we do something very specific. We always start with running backs. And one of the reasons is we believe that is a premium position because that's the position that returns its value more consistently than any other. So we are not afraid if we get the right running back of really paying up for that. Yeah, absolutely. So then the question becomes, how do we do that? What are the metrics that we should look at? It really is all about opportunities. Statistical correlation. I am not going to bore the viewers with blah, 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 fancy statistics, yada, yada. I just want to say this. Thank you. That yes, you're welcome. The number of opportunities is more statistically correlated to fantasy performance than any other metric. And it's not particularly close. Look, what do I mean when I say opportunities? Well, what I mean is the number of carries plus, don't forget, running backs often also catch passes plus number of targets. Why would opportunities matter so much? I mean, just from a layperson standpoint, why are they so strong in quarter? I think the best way that I can explain that is this. The yards per carry of elite running backs, believe it or not, are not much different than the yards per carry of that second tier or third tier running backs. They're really not. Once you make it to the NFL newsflash, you're damn good. I get that there's a difference there. But statistically, it's just not that meaningful to, to project for performance. Because Eric, let's face it, right? The more opportunities you get, the more yards you're going to get, the more points you're going to score. So what else is going to help predict running back performance or even the number of opportunities that they might get in a game? Yeah, so obviously in looking at the opportunities, you look at the previous four games for those opportunities. Mm -hmm. But you also want to see what is going to happen in the upcoming game where those opportunities may be even more, two key statistics, the implied total and the spread. Let's take that one at a time. First, the implied total. You want to make sure, just like we said with quarterbacks, you have an implied total of at least 23. You'd love for it to be higher. But unlike quarterback, it is a real premium to be favored. And there's just kind of like an inflection point uh, at around four points where increases the likelihood that that team is going to win. Would I love it to be over a touchdown? Really love that because it's all about game script. Once a, a team starts getting ahead, they're only going to run the ball more. Uh, teams tend to run the ball about 50% or more uh, when they are ahead, but they run the ball almost a third of the time when they're behind. Yeah. And that's huge, right? We're talking about opportunities here. And you can use the game script to help dictate what the opportunities are going to be for the upcoming game. And I'll tell you what else. This is less important than game script and less important than opportunities. If you're only going to focus on two metrics, those are the two. However, what separates the elite running backs from the middle tier is yards after contact. Seems fairly obvious. What does yards after contact mean? This is irregardless of whether they're running the ball or catching the pass. It's how many yards do they gain after that first person touches them? You might be thinking to yourself, I don't think I've ever seen yards after contact. I've heard that a few times, maybe on some show where there's some analyst who's droning on and on about statistics, but I, I've never actually seen. I want to point out, just as a little teaser, that all the statistics that we're talking about in this show are all easily and readily available in one place. So don't go anywhere. I'm not going to give that to you now. That's the hook. Yeah. That's the teaser, but at the end of the show, I promise you, we will tell you where all of the stats are going to be, including the third most cor correlative stat, which is yards after contact. Yeah, Gary, I think it is very fitting that you really like the stats yards after contact, since you like to yak a whole lot about oh. this. So the, the, the next 
a metric I think that is very valuable is snap percentage. And I'll give you an example that's something Gary just talked about. He said, well, what happens if your running back all of a sudden had a bad game? Do you need to be worried in those previous games? Well, if his snap percentage is still really high, as opposed to some of his load being taken away because of a situation of maybe coming to being a committee, or if something's changing where he's starting to lose a goal line presence, then that is something that's kind of a check. We do have snap percentage a little bit lower because by far it's not the most important, but unlike a, a tight end where I think snap percentage is almost useless, I think snap percentage could go a long way to determining what your role is on that team. Take Najee Harris, who's in on almost every snap, which immediately tells you on third down, he doesn't go out of the game. And guess what? He's not going out of the game in goal line. So it's an easy stat to kind of do a secondarily look to see if you're comfortable picking that player. Less than 30% of running back scoring is by touchdown. And that's right. That's on, uh, that's on FanDuel. It's less than 25% on DraftKings where you get the PPR. So you get the full point for all the receptions. Given the relatively small percentage, okay, that's why they're not among the top two or even three most core of the metrics. However, that doesn't mean we should totally ignore them. What you want to look for is a predictor of touchdowns. Believe it or not, is not how many touchdowns have they scored. Gosh, that would be easy. That almost sounds obvious. Turns out it is not the most predictive. What is the most predictive is carries inside the 10-yard line. It's amazing, Gary. 90% of all rushing touchdowns start with, with the ball being inside the 10, two-thirds inside the five. So it's amazing how predictive that stat can be. It, it really is. And here's what you got to be careful for. And Eric mentioned this a little bit earlier. The people in this world that I detest the most, touchdown vultures. Oh. Some teams have them. Some teams don't. Those general managers and coaches ought to be shot. That's just my personal opinion. The last thing that you should be doing is taking a look at the injury report. So just a quick reminder. Both DraftKings and FanDuel set their salary Sunday night, and no matter what, they will not change it. Yep. So if a starting running back gets injured on during Monday night football or during the week, then his backup is going to be extremely valuable, Gary. Uh, you're going to want to analyze the factors that we've talked about to, to make sure you understand what role that backup will he be a part of committee or will he be the uh, bell cow? But the bottom line is he becomes what we call a free square running back. So I'll just give you an example. You get some elite running backs that are going to cost you, you know, 7000 8000 bucks, right? Whether it's DraftKings or FanDuel, fifty dollars or 60000 is your total cap, right? These are expensive running backs. If they go down with an injury sometime within the week, so the DraftKings would have had them still at their high pricing and therefore would not have their replacement at a high pricing. The difference can literally be three to $4,000 difference in pricing. So we've given you a lot of metrics to consider and you might go, where am I going to find all these each week in order to decide who I'm going to start? There's that hook I was talking about right here. We got your back. We have teamed with DFS Hub and they have put all of these key statistics and we're going to give you a quick demonstration of how their software works. All right, we're on the DFS Hub site. And I got to tell you guys, there's a lot of great tools on this site. I'm only going to show you one, and it happens to be my favorite. It's the NFL Lineup Builder tool. And you can use this tool whether you're building a lineup on DraftKings or on FanDuel. And I am going to focus, there's a lot of information on the in, in this tool, but specifically in the player list area. And in this area, you're going to see all the metrics that we talked about on the show. So you're going to see opportunities uh, in the last four games. I really like that they picked specifically the last four active games. So if they weren't playing in a particular uh, game in the last four games, you don't get zeros that are weight down uh, your, your median. Let's move on. Also here is team points, which is also the team's implied total. 
the spread, and I love that they have the current Vegas spread in this column, which means I'm getting the latest and greatest information to the extent that the spread changed, uh, the snap percentage in the last three games, and amount of opportunities in the last four games inside the five and inside the 10. So that takes care of all the metrics we talked about on this show, except the fact that we said you have to be looking for the news and the injury report. Well, the lineup builder can help you with that too. How does it help? This column here, depth change. Anytime that there's a depth change, that someone goes from being uh, at the number one on the depth chart to dropping to two or going from two to one, it will be featured in this particular column, which will alert you to a potential opportunity. Also, if you click on any particular player, for example, Austin Eckler, you can look over here on the right and it'll have all the latest information, news, tweets, and updates specifically relating to Austin Eckler. And it's pulling it from over 4,500 news sources. So I this lineup builder tool also provides lots of flexibility with manipulation of the data. So first of all, the columns are all custom. You can move them around in whatever order that you want from left to right, and you can sort by any particular column. And specifically in the column, you can say, hey, only show me values that are greater than a certain amount or between a certain amount or less than a certain amount. All right, you might be asking, how much does all this cost? Uh, again, they have a free version. So it's a no brainer to sign up for the, the free version. And there's a lot you get in that free version, including 15 data columns. However, if you want to try the uh, the pro version, you can do it for a week for only $1 with this particular code, one buck. You can see what that pro version is all about. And if you like it, you can use it again on a weekly basis, or you can pay for their season pass. One thing you can do to support us here at FFC is please use our link, which is dfshub.com question mark, AFF equal sign, 687. We'll also include that link in the description section. All right, let's rejoin Gary back in the studio. In addition to this video here, Fantasy Football Consultants has a nine class DFS master series, which is available on our YouTube channel, which covers very in-depth strategies, tips, tricks, and metrics to choose all of the different positions so that you can have a winning DFS lineup for cash games and for guaranteed prize pool. And I'd like to remind everyone, it is free. My <laughs> favorite word. <laughs> so I just want to thank everyone. If you made it this part of the video, please smash that like button. If you haven't yet, hit the red subscriber button. Thank you so much for joining us, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Right now on your screen is a link to the NFL DFS Masterclass Series, and also the next show in our series, of the key metrics, we'll take a look at wide receivers.